The challenge of continuing to use fossil fuels is enormous. We'll need to do it for the next 100 years, but we can't do it the way we're doing at the moment. We must capture as much of the CO2 that we produce from those fossil fuels and store it. The one major mechanism we've got to doing that is to compress it and transport it and store it into a variety of underground reservoirs. If we're going to store carbon dioxide deep underground, we're talking about billions and billions of tonnes, we need to understand all the processes involved with doing that on an industrial scale. How does the carbon dioxide move underground? How can we ensure that it doesn't escape? What happens to it in the long term? All of these research questions are addressed as part of the Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre, a 10-year $70 million program funded jointly by Qatar Petroleum, Shell and the Qatar Science and Technology Park. At Shell obviously we're really concerned about the future of energy. About half of the world's oil yet to be developed is in those carbon reservoirs in the Middle East. The use of this research in understanding CO2 and its storage underground in the carbon reservoirs is really important to address climate change. Using this research to be able to enhance oil recovery from those reservoirs could make a very significant difference to the amount of energy produced. The Qatar Carbonates and Carbon Storage Research Centre has employed some of the top young academics, PhD students and postdocs, and attracted them to London. So we have a big pool of expertise, but it's very broad. It ranges from geologists who go out to field work to geochemists who work in the lab, through to physical chemistry experts, through to uh, computational fluid dynamics experts. An important aspect of carbon storage is that you're going to inject carbon dioxide in a supercritical state into carbonate reservoirs. Whilst a lot is known about CO2 on its own, not very much is known about the properties of CO2 when you mix it with other fluids. In carbon storage, the, the CO2 is injected into a saline aquifer. Once in the aquifer, it can dissolve into the reservoir fluid, and in order to uh, model what happens to the CO2 over long periods of time, you need to know the physical properties of the solution that's formed at high pressure and high temperature in the reservoir as the CO2 dissolves into the reservoir fluids. When CO2 is injected, it forms an acidic solution and that will dissolve the minerals of the carbonate reservoir. So this dissolution process is what we're looking at specifically here. And uh, we do that in a, in a reactor system that allows us to separate the effects of the surface reaction from the transport of the reactive species to and from the, from the surface. So that gives us a, a surface a reaction rate free of the influence of a mass transfer. In order to understand the long-term fate of the CO2 in the reservoir, we need to characterize and be able to predict the physical properties of that system, which can exist as two separate phases with carbon dioxide interfaced against brine, or it can exist as a solution after the CO2 has dissolved into the brine. In my laboratory, we're measuring the whole range of physical properties, including the interfacial properties that you get when you have CO2 and brine as separate phases, the solubility of the carbon dioxide in the brine, and properties such as the density and the viscosity of the resulting solutions. We have a high-pressure view cell, which is used for studying the interfacial properties of carbon dioxide and brine. The view cell is pressurized and we can heat this up into high temperatures or pressurize it to high pressures, introduce a droplet of brine or water and measure the interfacial properties of this droplet when we expose it to different uh, atmospheres of carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide with other gas mixtures. The experimental data that comes from an experiment like this is used in the determination of model parameters. In my group, we develop theoretical tools that start with an understanding of how uh, molecules interact with each other. We develop analytical expressions that can then predict the macroscopic properties of these complex fluids. It helps validate the experiments, and in return, we also validate our models. The work that we do developing theories is critical you know, for the future uh, of these tools. We have two ways of uh, disseminating our research, and that's through the academic method where we go to conferences and present and publish papers, but we also want to package our data up into much more useful tools that help the industry be able to predict what's going on subsurface. 
We're already working in Canada and the UK on, on small pilot scale activities. But if we're really going to address climate change, I think we're going to have to get massive scale. And this project will really help us make that understanding come alive. By 2050, we've got to capture 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide a year to meet our requirements to keep the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere down below 450 parts per million. What we've got to do in order to do that is to utilise all the resources we've got to rapidly develop this technology. The work that we do is allowing us to design safe and effective CO2 storage. If we achieve this, we will be able to move seamlessly and smoothly towards a secure energy future.